Before we get into this month's real estate update, I better pump the market. I think that'll do it. Hey there, welcome back to another monthly Canadian real estate market update here on Bald Prairie Real Estate. My name is Matthew Fife. I'm a real estate agent from Regina, Saskatchewan. That's my trusted assistant, Matilda. And what have we told you this past month? Well, the Canadian real estate market have been kind of boring, actually. You'll see it in the numbers, but you know what isn't boring? This terrible joke. My wife complains that I don't buy her flowers. To be honest, I didn't know she sold flowers. Oh, terrible joke. If you've got a terrible joke, please put it in the comments below. I'd love to use it in a future episode of Bald Prairie Real Estate. In Victoria, 384 homes were sold last month. That is down 40% from the five year average. Typically about 640 homes would sell in the month. This 790 homes put up for sale in the month. Well, that's equal to the five year average of 790. And currently there's about 2,100 homes for sale right now. That is actually up 17% from the five year average. Typically about 1,800 homes would be up for sale this time of year. I mean, months of inventory is at 5.5. We're trending closer and closer to a buyer's market in Victoria. Not not surprisingly, the composite benchmark price continues to drop in Victoria. It's about $900,000, which is up 7% from last year, but down about 11% from the peaks we saw in June, and that's down about $100,000. Now, when I was reading through the Victoria Real Estate Board's president's comments on the new legislation in BC that prevents strata condo associations from banning people from renting their own properties out, there was a comment that stuck out, and it applies across BC, and that was that the condos that you cannot put up for rent typically actually sell for less money because they're less valuable. So when we allow this, that any condo can have rentals, that of course is gonna help for rent prices, providing more properties for people to rent, but it will likely also drive up the value of those for the ownership side. So we're gonna have potentially cheaper rental options, but possibly these condos might end up becoming more expensive to purchase. This of course is one of those we're gonna have to wait and see, but it's an interesting comment that I hadn't thought about. And of course, it should be no surprise that the market pace in Victoria is slower than normal. In Vancouver, there were 1,600 homes that were sold in the month. That is down 40% from the five year average. Typically about 2,700 homes would typically sell in the month. There were also about 3,000 homes that were newly listed for sale. That's down 18% from the five year average. Typically about 3,700 homes would be up, put up for sale in the month. There's about 9,200 homes actively for sale right now. That is up 11% from the five of average typically this time of year you're gonna have about 8300 homes for sale and months of inventory is now at 5.7 which means that vancouver continues to trend closer and closer to what would be considered a buyer's market of course i know a lot of you saying it's already a buyer's market in vancouver but based on the inventory levels we're not quite there yet that composite benchmark price in vancouver about 1.1 million dollars it is down one percent year over year now we've been trending down all year long month over month but this is the first time we're down year over year and that means it's down about 11 percent from the peaks we saw in the spring. Much like in Toronto, prices are down year over year in Vancouver, and that is going to be the headline stat. But I don't call this local insight for nothing. When I was phoning my friends in Vancouver, I said, tell me what's going on there. What are you seeing? And they told me something was really interesting. And that if you look on East Vancouver, you're going to see that both row houses and condos have increased month over month. And that hasn't been the first time we've seen those condos increasing. Now, that East Vancouver area is much more of a local buyer market. It's not particularly popular with investors. So it's really interesting to see that those prices are increasing. Of course, I can already see in the comments, you guys just saying, well, all Matt does is just pump the real estate market, tell you prices are going up forever. No, what I'm saying here is that while well, the headlines are going to tell you, your VR prices are down month over month, prices are down. Depending where you're looking in Vancouver, you may actually see prices increasing. So it's important to know exactly what's going on in your local market. But overall, in Vancouver, the market pace is much slower than normal. The 1,650 homes sold in Calgary last month was actually more than they sold in Vancouver. And that isn't the first time that's happened this year, but it's up 12% over the five year average. Typically, a little under 1,500 homes would sell this month in Calgary. The 1,600 homes that were put up for sale is also down 14% from the five year average. Typically, closer to 1,900 homes we put up for sale this time of year. And that leaves about 3,100 homes currently for sale in Calgary. That is down 27% from the five year average. Normally, about 4,300 homes would be for sale this time of year, meaning months of inventories at 1.9, still very much in a seller's market. And that composite benchmark price is $520,000 in Calgary. That's up 12% year over year, but it is down about 5% from the peaks we saw earlier this year. Calgary now officially has surpassed the most number of homes sold ever in a single year, making 2022 the busiest year they've ever had on record. And especially in the back half of the year, those sales have been pushed up by the sales of condos and townhouses. Now, talking to my friends in Calgary, one really interesting stat they told me was that over half of all the listings available for sale right now 
are priced over $600,000. That is where there's some weakness in the market and pushing prices down. But if you're looking for a home under $600,000, there really isn't very much to look for. There's not a lot of choices for buyers and that's what's keeping prices stronger in that lower price point. Overall market pace in Calgary is about normal, but again, if they had more listings available, especially sub $600,000, probably see more sales, maybe busier. 1,250 homes were sold in Edmonton last month. That's down 11% from the five-year average of about 1,400. There was also 2,000 homes put up for sale in the month. That's down 12% from the five-year average, about 2,300. And there's 6,400 homes for sale right now in Edmonton. That's up 16% from the five-year average of about 5,500. Meaning months of inventory is 5.1, kind of right in the middle of a balanced market in Edmonton. The composite benchmark price is $360,000, down not only year over year about 2%, but down about 12% from the peaks we saw earlier this year. Now, when I asked my friends in Calgary, why the heck the stats in Edmonton don't seem to make a lot of sense compared to Calgary, they told me, well, Edmonton kind of stinks. That was them, not me. So don't get mad at me for that. That's what my friends in Calgary said. But really, when I was talking to my friends in Edmonton, they said, hey, this is what a pretty normal November looks like in Edmonton. So while the numbers look really different compared to the last couple of years, this is pretty typical. So no surprise, market pace in Edmonton is about normal. In Regina, 209 homes were sold in a month. That's down 5% from the five year average, which is 219. More on that later. There are 315 homes that were put up for sale. That's down 1% from the five-year average of 320. And there's a little under 900 homes for sale right now in Regina, which is down 23% from the five-year average, which is typically closer to 1,300, meaning months of inventory is at 4.2, right smack in the middle of a balance market. And the composite benchmark price, $314,000, exactly equal to where it was last year. Now, the numbers say that Regina had a slower than normal month, but if you pretend that 2020 and 2021 didn't happen, this would be the busiest November Regina has ever had for sales. And in fact, those years were so busy, they skew the five-year average. Previously, we'd never had a year where November had more than 200 homes sold until those last two. So again, in context, this would have actually been the busiest November we ever had if you pretend those two years didn't happen. Once again, single family homes around $400,000 continues to be one of the hottest selling products in Regina. They're tough to find right now. I got buyers looking for right now, so if you have one, let me know. But it's really tough to find anything about $400,000 right now in Regina. So market pace in Regina, well, compared to the last couple of years, is slow, but this is about normal. The 270 homes sold last month in Saskatoon is down about 9% from the five-year average. Typically, closer to 300 homes will sell in the month of November. The 415 homes put up for sale, well, that is down 10% from the five-year average. Normally, you're gonna see closer to 460 homes put up for sale in the month. And right now, there's about 1,000 homes for sale in Saskatoon. That's down about 19% from the five-year average. Typically, about 1,250 homes are up for sale this time of year. Months of inventory, 3.8, basically right in the middle of the balance market. The comps of benchmark price is about $370,000. That is up 3% year over year, but down about 4% from the peak we saw a few months ago. The hot price point in Saskatoon continues to be properties priced between $300,000 and $500,000. That's where there's the lowest inventory levels. But basically across the board, whether it's the different prices or different styles of property, we're essentially pretty much a balance market across the board in Saskatoon right now. And so the market pace in Saskatoon is about normal. The dynasty that never happened, that's the Winnipeg Blue Bomber, sorry, you lost. It sucks. Actually, I'm not upset at all. 870 homes were sold last month in Winnipeg. That's down 30% from the five-year average. The 1,400 homes put up for sale. That's up 5% from the five-year average. Right now, about 3,400 homes are for sale in Winnipeg, and that is up 33% from the five-year average. Months of inventory, just about four, meaning we're right smack in the middle of a balanced market in Winnipeg right now. And with a benchmark price of $330,000, that's not only down 1% year over year, but down about 10% from the peaks we saw earlier this year. When I phoned my friends and asked them to tell me what's going on in Winnipeg, I said, what's the hottest market? What's the coldest market in Winnipeg? Well, the hottest market right now is White Ridge, and the coldest market is East St. Paul. Kind of across the board though, it seems like buyers are in a wait and see mood to see what we're gonna have with interest rates in the spring and where prices will be at. So the market pace in Winnipeg is slower than normal. In Toronto, the GTA, 4,500 homes were sold last month, down 41% from the five year average. Typically about 7,700 homes would sell in the month. There's also less than 9,000 homes listed for sale in the month, down 20% from the five year average. Typically about 11,000 homes would be put up for sale in the month. And there's just under 12,000 homes for sale right now in Toronto. That's actually down 10% from the five year average. Typically a little over 13,000 be up for sale this time of year, meaning months of inventory 
is 2.6. So technically Toronto continues to be a seller's market. We'll be talking about what's going on there in the local insight section. With the composite benchmark price being under $1.1 million, not only does that mean year over year prices are down 6% in Toronto, but also down 20% from what we saw the peaks early in the spring. Okay, well, let's get the obvious out of the way right now. Sales are way down in Toronto, but it's way too simple to just say that and leave it at that. This is local insight for a reason. From October to November, typically sales will drop about 12%, but this year they only dropped 8%. And then on the flip side, normally inventory will drop about 16% from month to month. Now this month, we only saw it drop 8%. Now let's look at prices. Yes, eight months in a row, prices have dropped in Toronto. Five of those eight months, the last five months, the amount that prices have dropped month over month has declined each and every single month. And this past month to month saw the smallest price drop we've seen all year at 0.8%. Now I'm not saying that prices won't continue to drop or that we're at the bottom and prices are gonna work their way up. What I'm saying is that there's a very clear pattern here that the pace of price depreciation is slowing down. And a good friend of mine in Toronto, I think outlined it really well. He said the unreasonable expectations for sellers wanting prices from the spring and the unreasonable expectation for buyers when it's big discounts, well, that is starting to shrink and we're seeing more reasonable expectations from both buyers and sellers of prices. If you want a great example of that, a friend sent me a good listing where it was listed for $1.7 million, no action, no offers, nothing. They cancel it, relist it at $1.3 million, they get eight offers and sell it for 1.5. Now again, that's just one example, but that's more realistic from the sellers expecting where the price is needed to be to get it sold in the current market. Because right now, this market feels like both buyers and sellers are trying to figure out what the new normal is in Toronto. And with sales being down 40%, not surprisingly, the market pace in Toronto is way slower than normal. What happened to Ottawa last month? Well, 850 homes sold last month, but that's still down 40% from the five year average. Typically about 1400 homes would sell in the month. And the 1600 homes that were put up for sale, well, that is up 15% from the five year average, where typically about 1380 homes would be put up for sale. The almost 3000 homes currently for sale in Ottawa, well, that is up 35% from the five year average, where typically about 2200 homes will be up for sale this time of year. And so months of inventory is at 3.5. That's actually just barely into a balance market in Ottawa. The composite bench price in Ottawa is about $615,000. That is down 2% year over year and down about 16% from the highs in the spring. When I was talking to my friends in Ottawa and asked them what's going on out there, they said, it's pretty quiet right now. Well, that doesn't surprise me with sales being down 40%. In fact, I was looking back for the last five years, there hasn't been a single November with less than a thousand homes sold up until this year. But as a buyer, you have more choice now because there's significantly more inventory out there for you to look at. You can take your time, make a good choice, and probably get a decent discount on those houses as well. So it shouldn't come as a shock. Market pace in Ottawa, slower than normal. In Montreal, they had 2,700 sales in the month. That is down 35% from the five-year average. Typically about 4,100 homes will be sold in the month. The 4,700 homes put up for sale in the month, well, that is down 6% from the five-year average of about 5,100 homes put up for sale in the month. And active inventory at 16,000 is down 6% from the five year average. Typically they're a little over 17,000 this time of year, but months of inventory is at six, meaning Montreal is now trending back into a buyer's market. The benchmark price in Montreal is just under $500,000, meaning it's equal to last year and down about 10% from the peaks we saw in the spring. Now the numbers show that not only is the market much slower in Montreal, but it looks like it's starting to slow down even more. And that may be entirely true. When I'm phoning my friends in Montreal though, they're telling me a little bit of a different story in that they were feeling like it was a little bit busier, the phone was ringing more. Now we're gonna have to wait and see, does that translate into sales in the upcoming months or not? Or is it just happened to be their phones are ringing a little bit more? But right now, it's pretty slow in Montreal. That's why the market pace is slower than normal. In Halifax, there were 331 homes down 39% from last year. There's also 370 homes listed for sale. That's down 33% from last year. And there are 700 homes currently for sale in Halifax. That is up. Hold up for this. 397% from last year when there were 150 homes for sale this time last year. That's actually pretty crazy. But even still, months of inventory is at 1.8, meaning Halifax is still a seller's market. And the average price bumped back up again, about $545,000, up 15% from last year, down about 5% from what we saw earlier this year. When I'm talking to my friends in Halifax, they're telling me, yes, it is slower than it has been the last couple of years but this has still been a fairly busy November. In fact, 30% of homes that sold last month sold at or above asking price. It's kind of crazy for what is supposed to be a slow market. And they're saying it feels, even just the last couple of weeks, 
like things have started to pick back up again and they're anticipating it could be a very busy spring. But still, based on the numbers, I've got Halifax at about normal for this time of year. Hey, if you like this video, please give me a like. If you love learning about real estate, hit the subscribe button for me. And even better, throw a comment in the comment section. I love chatting with you guys in the comment section. If you want to learn even more about buying a house, maybe, how about check out this? There's a great video for first time home buyers. As always, thanks very much for watching.